Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India we have discussed about the non coplanar uh, orbit maneuver so in that context uh, last time we saw that uh, one orbit is uh, the polar one another one is the equatorial orbit and a satellite in equatorial orbit uh, it has to go and meet the satellite in the polar orbit at certain position so in that context we worked out the uh, complete problem but toward the end uh, because of the lack of time, I could not discuss uh, some of the points. So, let us uh, look into those points, we will wind up and then we will do the same type of another problem, so that uh, the things gets concluded. Okay. Uh, if we look into uh, this particular uh, problem, what we have discussed last time. So, there was a satellite at A and it has to go and catch up the satellite at B and the orbit in which it has to go. So, that orbit it is like this. Okay. So, it is a non coplanar maneuver. So, you are going from equatorial plane which is x z plane, x z is the equatorial plane and uh, x y is the polar plane. So, satellite has to be sent from point A to point B okay, and the corresponding trajectory is shown in green. So, this is the transfer trajectory. So, last time what we have looked into that the flight path angle turned out to be minus 15 degree. So, this minus 15 degree where it is located you can look from this place this is the perigee point in the equatorial elliptic orbit, perigee point in the equatorial equatorial elliptic orbit. And at this point, the impulse delta v is given. So, delta v is provided here in this place. So, the initial velocity was along this direction, we will use some other color. Initial velocity is along this direction, this is v i, and this is your final velocity. So, v i minus v f this gives you delta v and this delta v then we need to break along the three axis x y and z to get how much impulse is required along all the three axis. Okay, so, as you can see from this figure the because this phi is negative. So, this phi goes inside okay, this is going inside this is negative phi because this is the center of force center of force. Okay. And this angle then becomes 90 degree okay, in this plane. So, therefore, you can see that from uh, or either the angle between this and this, this is uh, not between this uh, in this plane. Uh, this is as we draw more lines, so this gets complicated. I will use another color. The angle between this and this, this dotted line, dotted brown line and this blue line, it is a 90 degree. So, you can see that with respect to this radius vector, the phi angle here, it will turn out to be negative. So, this phi angle, this is negative as shown here in this place. 
on the other hand if the same angle it comes outside that means instead of going inside if it is somewhere here in this place it is going like this if v direction is here in this place so then this phi this gets a positive value so this phi is then positive while this phi which i have shown here in brown so this phi is negative so i am encircling here so this phi is negative so this way you have to visualize where the things are going uh, how your velocity vector is located with respect with respect to the initial velocity vector and also with respect to the x y and z reference frame so that you can get the three components uh, along the x y and z reference frame and thereafter rest of the things we have calculated that how much impulse will be required along all the three axes okay so today we do one more same type of problem it's the only difference here it lies in the figure it's a little high it's a hypothetical problem okay so here in this problem let us consider that x y z this is the reference frame we are having and uh, mass of the earth we will assume to be concentrated uh, just at the center of the earth okay and uh, so that its a surface is not there okay and uh, why i am telling like this because i am taking a orbit which we call as the grazing orbit means uh, if this is the surface of the earth so on this itself if there is the satellite moving in free space not on the uh, touching with this okay just it's a uh, and you know that the corresponding velocity in the circular orbit will be given by mu by r under root so here r we have to replace by re which is the radius of the earth so and the whole mass you can assume to be concentrated on the center okay so this we call as the grazing orbit so let us say that this is the x direction y direction and this is the z direction and the problem is states like this so from the previous problem we have little bit of difference here that this radius is 3r and uh, the other radius is just r it is lying here so you your point a is now at located at a distance r from the center and then the satellite has to go and catch up so initially this satellite is here and this will go to the b prime or let us say b or c prime whatever it is is and this angle is given to be 30 degree so your satellite has to go and catch up the satellite at a in elliptical orbit so it has to go and catch up this here in this place so again the same kind of figure here but only thing that your distances they are different so here uh, this uh, this angle uh, let us say this is l latitude l equal to 30 degree this is given okay. previous problem just recall the previous problem okay and radius of the earth we are taking to be 6378 km and mu earth will take it as 3986000 km cubic per second square Okay, so uh, we can start working with this. So first, let us uh, uh, what we have done last time in the last two lectures. So we are going to follow the same step. So going from time from b to b prime or the same thing last time we have written as bc okay so this time will be 
the time period in the orbit because this orbit is circular orbit. So, how much time it will take to go from this place to this place. So, T B B prime or T B C uh, let us make it C only to be consistent with the last time. So, T B C T B C. So, time period in the polar orbit and this has to divided by the corresponding 2 pi and multiply by the corresponding the angle to which the satellite is going from b to c. So, the, this is theta divided by pi means so it is a uh, theta divided by 180 degree. So, the, this will get converted into uh, theta is given in as the 30 degree. So, this we have to convert into radian. Okay. So, this will be pi by 6 radian. So, what we do 30 multiplied by pi by 180 degree. So, this gets converted into the time taken to go from B to C. So, in the polar orbit this is 2 pi 3 r whole cube which is the radius of the polar orbit divided by mu okay. and the, then this 1 by 2 pi and then theta pi by 180 degree. So, theta will replace by one uh, simply 30 degree. So, this this cancels out and we get here pi by 6 times 3 r cube. So, inserting the corresponding values, we know this quantity r is simply r e equal to 6, 3, 7, 8 kilometer. So, if we insert those values and the, this is mu earth. So, inserting these values, Zero to zero eight seconds. So this is the time required to move from point B to C in the circular orbit. Now we need to determine the uh, transfer orbit in which orbit we want to send it, okay. and uh, the time taken to go from point A to point C. Okay. So, this is A to C T A C this must be equal to T B C. If this happens then the rendezvous will take place. So, for calculating this the next step we have to calculate the eccentricity of the transfer orbit and this we have done last time. So, R C minus R A divided by R a cos theta a this phi is not the we, we may use some uh, other notation here may be to not to confuse with the flight path angle which we are quite often using it. So, we will write it as theta 0. So, here theta 0 this is the location of or the true anomaly true anomaly true anomaly of the point A with respect to Perigee of the transfer orbit. 
and this is uh, this assuming theta 0 this is important because uh, based on this only e t can be calculated and this we have to assume. So, if you draw figure uh, on a reduced scale, so things will be clear to you in which orbit uh, what should be the theta 0 value. So, last time we have looked at this value was perhaps 340 degree we assumed in the beginning, but this time it will turn out to be different. So, then inserting all the values here R c is 3 r minus R a is r r cos theta a. Okay, so, uh, here uh, this uh, one correction is required this uh, theta 0 uh, theta 0 we are writing as the true anomaly of the point a rather we have written as theta a this part theta is the location of the true anomaly of the point a with respect to the perigee of the transfer orbit. Okay. So, this we write as theta a and the part here which appears this is nothing but your the then the location let us say that uh, perigee is lying here of the transfer orbit. This is the perigee of the transfer orbit. So, from this perigee this location then this becomes theta a this is the location of a and what will be the location of c this will be theta c. Okay. So, theta c can be written as theta a plus 90 degree here in this case. So, this is not theta 0 the notation I have been using, but rather this should be 90 0 90 degree. So, uh, this part is basically your theta c same definition location of the point c with respect to the perigee of the transfer orbit. So, this cos theta a minus r c this is 3 r cos 90 plus theta a and this will get reduced to r r will cancel out. So, 3 minus 1 this becomes 2 and here cos theta a minus 3 and cos theta. So, this will become plus sin theta. So, this gives your E t and now depending on the assumed value of theta a you will get the value for the E t. So, letting theta a to be 5 degree Okay, so, this gives you E t equal to 2 divided by cos 5 degree plus sin 3 sin 5 degree plus 3 sin 5 degree. So, this is the value for the E t. Actually, for solving this problem, I programmed, and uh, just using the program, then I found the suitable. But uh, the initial value I guessed, okay, depending on the figure, uh, you can draw the figure and you can try to guess where the perigee of the transfer orbit will lie. So the, this is just a guess, and thereafter I have done the everything using the uh, program written in Fortran. So, now compute R a V a square divided by mu. So, from here your R a is known mu earth is known. So, velocity at the point a in the transfer orbit will be known to you. E t is 1.59025 and cos theta is 5 degree and 
and this yields 2.591634 Once we have got this value, so the semi major axis of the transfer orbit can be calculated, which is r divided by 2 minus uh, r a b a square, r a b a square divided by. So, r a is the point where we have the distance r from the center of the earth, 2 minus this quantity 2.5916345 and this quantity is nothing but 6378 kilometers. So, once we insert these values, so it is this turns out to be 10780.30449 kilometers. So, this is the uh, semi major axis of the transfer orbit. Also from here, the V A square, this becomes 2.5916345 mu earth divided by R A and this we take the under root. So, V A will be available from this point and when this is required, this quantity will be required once we are looking for how much impulse is to be given and uh, in which direction this is going to be. So, it is uh, obvious from our this previous figure you can see that uh, this impulse has to be in the in whichever orbit you want to bring it. So, the final velocity at point A, the velocity at point A should be in the plane of the transfer okay. and plane of transfer here as we know from the previous problem that it is making 30 degree and here also we have in this problem also we are taking 30 degree. So, the in inclination of the transfer orbit to the here in this case x y plane we are aware of I have changed the notation here it was z I have made it this point as x. Okay. So, uh, this x is tag I have changed and this does not matter if you, you can choose any you can make it y or whatever you like you can do. So, with this information uh, we need to now find out the transfer time. So, T A C this expression again what we have used last time we need to uh, we use will be using it E T A square minus 1 this is not L this is E. Sin theta A plus uh, this is the location of whatever is going here this is your theta c. So, this is theta a plus 90 degree e transfer orbit cos theta a plus 90 degree minus So, last time formula we are using it. So, this is for the final position and uh, the quantity to be subtracted is for the initial position e t a square minus 1 simply sin theta a cos theta a minus l n theta a by 2 
So, we need to put here the E t which we have calculated on the previous page theta a is 5 degree. Okay, so, only theta a and uh, E t, A t also we have already calculated and mu is earth is known to us. So, if we insert these values, we will get the value for the theta a c. So, theta a c turns out to be 1939.72677 second, while the theta b c T B C, uh, this is T A C and T B C we have calculated as 2195.20208 seconds. This was T B C. So, this implies T A C is not equal to T B C, difference is large. Remember that in the if your hyperbolic orbit is there, so uh, in the hyperbolic orbit, your velocity may be uh, something like 10 kilometers per second, say, uh, as we will see later on. So uh, if if we look here into the difference, so almost this is 200 second of difference. Okay, so in 200 second, there will be lot more difference. So, what we need to do that T A C is small that means, you are going in a faster orbit and T B C is larger. So, I have to reduce the velocity little bit so that it can T A C becomes 2195. So, that means, we have to go in a slower orbit. So, this is time taken to go from point A to C in the transfer orbit, time taken in the transfer orbit from A to So, in the next trial, I made it theta a equal to 15 degree. So, the corresponding value for the E t then turns out to be because I programmed it. So, it was easy for me to do this problem and R a V a square, this is for the transfer orbit remember. this turns out to be 2.1505 semi major axis this turns out to be. So, you can see that the eccentricity has been reduced. So, re reduction of the eccentricity earlier it was 1.5 something 1.59. Okay. So, larger the eccentricity the faster the orbit the smaller the eccentricity that means you are moving toward the parabolic orbit. So, little away from the elliptical orbit. So, this orbit becomes slow. Okay. So, A then turns out to be four two three five one point eight five nine eight kilometers and T A C twenty two nine two point four six. 87 second and if we compare this with T B C. So, T B C is 2195.72 second. This is T B C. So, obviously, here in this case T A C is greater than T B C. That means, in the orbit in which the satellite will go, it is uh, now has become slower. 
so we have to make it fast so in the next step the theta a is chosen to be 12 degree so theta a equal to 12 degree and remember uh, because i have done it on comp through program so it's a very easy for me to do this but if you do on calculator it takes time so assuming theta a equal to 12 degree et turns out to be 1.248530 so transfer orbit you can see that now the this value has gone up the transfer orbit so that it becomes faster similarly r a v a square for the transfer orbit this quantity will be 2.251583 corresponding a turns out to be 25351.42806 kilometers so you can see the difference here in these two places a small change in eccentricity that makes a large difference in the semi major axis once a is known so therefore tac can be computed using the equation this equation okay only thing that you need to replace here theta a in that place by 15 degree here in this case by 12 degree so tac turns out to be 2193.00317 seconds now you can compare with this value so a little bit short of this okay. so that means by now you might have realized that uh, this orbit corresponding to theta equal to 12 degree it's a little faster so we have to make it little slow so that means theta a i need to choose little greater than 12 degree okay so in the next trial we choose theta a equal to 12.06 degree okay. so corresponding et will turn out to be 1.24631 a transfer orbit 25577 and uh, ra va square divided by mu in the transfer orbit this turns out to be 2.24936 and tac the transfer time 2195.03699 so it's a very close to the tbc so this is almost close to tbc so hence calculation process over what we need to do now is just to find out the impulse how much impulse is required along the three axis okay. so we have got here tac equal to tbc so already i have drawn the figure so the first of the need is to find out the impulse angle uh, this flight path angle phi which we are writing as e sin theta a recalling equation from the last lecture e cos theta a and this is e transfer okay e transfer so flight path angle for the transfer orbit so 1.24 what we have computed this quantity this will go here 24631 and sin theta a is this quantity 12.06 degree and this gives you phi equal to 6.693617 degree so approximately this is 6.69 degree uh, 
Okay, so this implies that the orbit now it is a lying along this direction. Okay, it is a coming out of the the uh, this plane. Here A is written, and let us uh, make this point as A, D, E, and F. Yeah, because B is the point, uh, B is the point on the ground somewhere. It's a here B point is here, so this we can make it C. So it's a going out of the plane A, F, E, and D, and it is on the toward the right hand side, okay, as shown here. So that means this is the situation now. Your transfer orbit is going inside like this, okay, and the velocity vector. So here, the because of the perigee position location, your velocity direction is coming outside, and it will be something like this. Okay. With this, it's a making this angle as phi. Okay, so th this is a positive angle, six point six nine. We have got it degree. This is your point E. This is the point F. This is the point A, and this is point D. So it's a going outside of the plane D E F A toward the right. Okay, and the how much angle it's a making with the base plane? So with the base plane, this line it's a making angle. So the angle between if i extend it so this line and this line this is 30 degree because the transfer orbit inclination is 30 degree so rest of the calculation it becomes easy through this graph so i have made already the graph for you for the figure so using that figure you can work out the whole thing So, the rest of the things uh, we do it in the next lecture. Thank you very much.